Hey, what's up guys? Um, today we're going to install a Berger Motorsports JB4 um, tuner or piggyback, whatever you want to call it, onto a 2016 Volkswagen Golf R. Um, it's the JB4 Beta 1. Um, so anyway, we're going to install that today. Anyway, anyway um, let's get started. Okay, so this is the actual JB4 unit itself um, and a few tools I figured I would need for the install. Just kind of resting it on the motor for now while I disconnect the battery. Um, it's advised that you disconnect the battery or wait for the car to go into basically sleep mode. Uh, so I just basically take the um, negative terminal off the battery um, and just kind of tuck it up behind the battery. Uh, this is advised because the ECU is basically still on and when you're you know, disconnecting harnesses or plugs from the stock harness around the motor. Uh, apparently you can like break your ECU or cause problems. It's just always a safe bet to just always disconnect your battery uh, when you're messing with any kind of harness stuff. So um, just simply disconnect it. And then I remove my intake piping here so that I can run the wires underneath the intake um, instead of going above the box or above the intake box. Um, just so it's a little bit of a cleaner install and um, it's pretty simple you just remove the clasp there on top and then just slide it back and you should be able to get the um, bunch of wires or the the the, the JB4 wire underneath it uh, pretty easily and uh, this little blue wire here you're gonna use a little bit later so I just kind of put it off to the side um, and these are the three separate wires that are needed to basically sit between the harness and the motor. Um, so basically what you do is just basically disconnect wires that are connecting to motor on different points. One is on the MAF, one is on the, um, the manifold, and then one is on the charge pipe. So that longer one there, uh, you're going to need a little later. You're going to feed it down the front of the motor, um, basically right, literally right in front of the radiator fan. Um, these plugs can only go into the plugs that they're designed for. Um, they use different plugs, uh, so you can't really get them mixed up. Um, I'm obviously starting with the one here on the uh, manifold side, and uh, you're basically disconnecting this plug from the motor here with the pink on it, or the green little tab, and then you slide it into the JB4 harness. I was just making sure the little clip was um, connected, and then your JB4 second plug basically connects into the motor. So basically the JB4 sits between the two plugs. Um, and uh, this is a, another one I'm looking for down here on the lower right side, I guess the upper right side of the motor. It's kind of hard to get to, but there's two plugs there. Uh, it's the lower plug that you're going to disconnect and put the JB4 between. Um, I don't remember if this is the MAF or if this is the manifold plug. I don't really remember. I mean, obviously you can read the instructions. It'll tell you exactly what it is, but it's a pretty, pretty, pretty basic. It's just the lower plug. You disconnect it, stick the JB4 in between it. So you're going to plug the plug that you just pulled off of the motor into the JB4 and the other plug from the JB4 back to the motor. Um, and then the um, little clip you just got to make sure when you're plugging all of them in you're gonna hear like clicks on all of them. that's just how you know that it's click clicked in um, this is the charge pipe wire it's gonna basically just be fed down the front of the motor and um, I just kind of made sure it wasn't touching anything on the way down um, obviously I don't have the best of lighting here but this is a pretty 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 basic install um, and then you're going to need to go ahead and jack up the car. Some people can apparently get their hands down the front of the car to unclip it. I definitely could not. Um, and, uh, it was much, much easier for me to just get underneath the car. Obviously I jack it up, jack up both sides. I'm not really a huge proponent of just jacking up one side of the car. Apparently you can just do it with just jacking up the driver's side of your car. Um, but there's, you know, that tray that needs to come off here that you got to get, um, some, some Torx bits basically to unscrew it. So I was just like, ah, I don't, I don't mind jacking up both sides of the car. Um, so you're just going to need to remove this under tray or splash guard, whichever you would like to call it. Um, I think it's like six or seven, uh, T25, I think, or T15, one of the two. 
uh, Torx bits and it slides right off. And uh, just be careful when you're putting it back on to not over torque down those bolts because I think they go into grommets. Um, and as you can, you can kind of see here that I have a screwdriver in my right hand. Um, I found it much easier to move this pipe out of the way. You'll see here in a second. And then I'm able to get my hand, you know, above um, and, and, and connect these in. But uh, you just use a real small screwdriver and you push basically the top side of the pin. Like, like if you were to think of the ground and the hood, I would say the hood side of the pin. Um, you put your screwdriver basically above the pin and just push out the little tab that holds it in place and then just simply connect the two uh, JB4 plugs, one to obviously the harness and then one to the little tab um, on the charge pipe. And uh, that is pretty much it for the um, the actual plugs that are connected to the JB4 that connect into the harness. Um, and then obviously putting these uh, Torx bits back in to put the splash guard back in. Like I said, be very careful when you're putting these back in because I think it screws into a grommet or some sort of plastic. Um, it's not a piece of metal, so just they don't need to be super tight. Um, you, you could easily, easily strip these um, screws and then you would have obviously, you know, a missing screw. Um, and then I went ahead and dropped the car here because it was much easier to get to the firewall that way. When the car's up in the air, it's a little harder to reach. And, um, you're going to need to run another wire from the OBD2 inside the cabin, go through the firewall. It comes out behind a little hole where the battery box is at. Um, and with the car down, it's much easier to reach um, unless you're a really tall dude. Um, I definitely was having a little bit of trouble and I'm six foot. I was having a little bit of trouble seeing behind the uh, battery box. So I went ahead and dropped it. Um, this little wire here, this little posi tap is for the blue wire uh, you use the blue wire to tap into the red wire on obviously you can see the gray plug that's on the firewall here so I go ahead and pull I go ahead and pull out the red wire I put the posi tap back plate basically this little piece of you'll see it here in a second has this little gray thing has like basically a, a spike that goes through the wire and then you screw this red part onto it and that's got basically a piece of metal that touches the back side of that spike it's just an easy way to tap a wire it comes with the kit um just an easy way to tap a wire without soldering without cutting the wire harness or anything um, and then you basically just use the blue wire that they provide you with and you kind of just screw it in this is really the easiest way i've ever seen to tap a wire in my life um, super simple to install super clean doesn't require you to cut anything like I said and um, super super simple so then obviously I'm using a zip tie here to basically use it as a f lead or to feed the um, this uh, connector through the firewall there's a small grommet you're gonna see here in a few seconds and it's much easier to feed it through with like a zip tie or like a coat hanger of some sort um, and this is just kind of how I I rigged it up so that I could feed the zip tie through the hole and uh, I would get the maximum distance uh, of the or the maximum length of the zip tie um, by using two zip ties, one zip tie to hold it through. Um, so now I'm underneath the uh, dash here. There's just one small like 15 or uh, 25. I can't remember which one was which. I think this is the 15 Torx bit holding on this little under tray panel. Uh, you're going to pull this off. Takes like two seconds. And then there's some foam up there on the firewall that you can see. You yank it out and you basically just find there's like a little hole in the firewall to the right um, where that foam was at. And you're going to feed the um, zip tie through there. And then obviously you see I'm looking back here. I wasn't able to see it. So I just ended up going ahead and unscrewing the battery box. Um, there's a small plate that basically holds the battery up against the firewall. And I ended up removing or moving that so that I could get my hand behind the battery because I was not able to see the zip tie. Some other people have had success with it, but I did not. And it's literally just one like 13 millimeter or 14 millimeter uh, bolt that has like a little metal plate that pushes up against the battery box. Um, so I just go ahead and remove it and you can literally just slide the battery. Yeah. Look at that. You can just slide the battery and then you can get your whole hand back there to grab whatever you end up getting through. So I pull the zip tie through the firewall. Super easy. I can't believe it's not in the instructions to move the battery box. It's literally one bolt. 
um, connect the plug into the JB4, and then I just tuck the wires basically behind the battery box to make it look a little more OEM, and you can't really see the wires, obviously. Um, plug the OBD2 port that they – or plug into the port that they provide you, and then uh, just kind of start buttoning everything back up. Um, one quick thing they say in the instructions is obviously when you turn the car on, that's more than likely going to have some uh, lights on on the dash for um, basically turning off the car un or unplugging the battery and then obviously installing some sort of hardware in the car and it kind of just notices it kicks on the battery or it kicks on some of the uh, traction control lights a check engine light things like that and it goes away as literally as soon as you start driving um, so super simple install it should probably take about it took me about 45 minutes because i ended up jacking up the car uh, afterwards and um, it's a pretty pretty like I said, pretty simple install and an awesome results uh, for the money spent and the time spent. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below and um, that's it. Thanks.